Thank you all for coming out tonight. I very much appreciate it. And all the fellow startups in the Bay Area and the Boston area, I very much appreciate it as well. My name is David Kovar. I'm the CEO and founder of URSA, Unmanned and Robotics Systems Analysis. And there we go. The problem that we're facing, that we as a society are facing, is that by 2020 there will be 7 million drones, 10 million autonomous vehicles or semi-autonomous vehicles, and over 20 billion industrial IoT devices. As Gardner says, the quantity of data contributed to our society by all these devices will overwhelm organizations and society, not only just t ingesting it, but parsing it, making sense of it, and presenting it so we can make informed, intelligent decisions. Keep hitting the wrong button. Event data is the most valuable source of that intelligence that we need for making decisions, but there are very limited solutions for synthesizing analysis from multiple sensors and systems. We combine data from multiple sensors and systems and apply big data and machine learning, and I apologize for using the buzzwords, uh, to enable analysts and systems to make decisions quickly and accurately, retrospectively, in real time, and also predictively. We will be the authoritative source of autonomous systems data in the world. One of the things that we bring value to society by doing this is by mitigating risk. A number of months ago, there was a Tesla autonomous vehicle crash that killed somebody in Tempe, Arizona. Societal risk, people are dying because of autonomous systems. Financial risk, NVIDIA was one of the components on board that vehicle and potentially one of the contributing factors to that accident. Their stock dropped 7.8% in the following days, losing $11 billion in value. Reputational risk. Permits revoked for all firms, regulatory oversight went up, public trust went down. By better understanding autonomous systems and understanding how they behave and how they fail, we can help address all of these risks. Our system is very flexible. Every time you expose it to one uh, vehicle, it starts understanding about other vehicles. Once you expose it to drones, it starts understanding airplanes. As you expose it to any autonomous system, the core engine gets better, it gets more efficient, it gets exposed to more data, and we have a more valuable platform. We also expose our platform to individual users, and we exchange analysis services to them in exchange for their data to further enrich our data sets. Our roadmap starts with autonomous aerial vehicles. The U.S. government classifies UAVs in four cat five categories, one to five. We pretty much own the group one space. These are the commercial and consumer UAVs. We understand the data they generate. We understand how to make, visualize it, how to present it to people. We're working on landing contracts for the military uh, drones. Everything in between is relatively easy after that. We can deploy on mobile. We can deploy on desktop. We can deploy in the cloud. We need to push what we're doing out to the edges and down into embedded systems. We're already doing this retrospectively. We're working on doing it real time, and we want to do predictive as well. Then we're going to work on marine, and we're going to work on the ground as well. Revenue comes from pilot programs, comes from partnerships and channel uh, uh, partners, and from a freemium platform. All of these generate revenue for us, which we need to run the company, but more importantly, they generate data and they generate a very rich source of data, very uh, uh, diverse set of data, and that gives us a lot better understanding of how these systems operate. Our traction, on the military side, we're working with US Air Force and Marine Corps for the MQ-9 Reaper programs. We're working with SOCOM to provide tactical solutions in the field for doing real-time or very near real-time analysis of captured or downed UAVs. We just today won an SBIR 18.2 uh, special topic uh, which is really going to help us build the platform up. We have a commercial partner, MSAB. We're releasing product with them next month, uh, starting to generate revenue, selling to 25,000 of their existing customers worldwide. Uh, White Fox, we're extending up a counter UAS analysis system. And Draper, we're doing counter UAS digital battle damage assessment. In terms of demo, we're building infrastructure. We're doing picks and shovels. I don't have any splashy videos to show you. We're leveraging our partners for doing that part of it. We're a two-person company. We're expecting to see $300,000 in revenue next quarter simply by ingesting our engine, putting our engine into their product 
and having them do our sales for us. And that's URSA. We're on manned robotics systems analysis doing autonomous systems intelligence platform. Thank you. Can you speak about the uh, open source technologies that you work with or that you integrate with a little bit? Certainly. Uh, a lot of this is built on open source approaches. The back end is using Elasticsearch. It's using a variety of other tools that we've looked through. There's not, there are, are there are open source solutions out there that do some of this. Uh, most of them are not terribly well supported. Um, and as I was talking to some other people here, you can build companies on open source solutions. Um, but if you can identify open source solutions that large companies are already using that are not meeting their needs because they're not supported, that gives you an opportunity. Uh, however, we built this from the ground up. We reverse engineered everything we needed to do on our own, and it's all ours in that sense. Sir. The military is very interested in that, that data set. Um, there are a variety of other people that have expressed interest in the data set. Um, the primary need for the data right now is for machine learning. So we need both the training set and we need the real world set. Um, like anybody else collecting a vast amounts of data, there is an enormous amount of value in that data as we build it up. And as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we really want to be the authoritative source for autonomous systems data in the world. Um, if we can capture not only UAVs, but ground vehicles and marine vehicles and really understand how these systems operate and have the data to back up um, our insights, that produces an enormous amount of value for the company in terms of going, raising money, potentially selling the uh, company as well. And it's not value, I mean, if you're using Gmail, for example, you're exchanging your data for, uh, they're getting a lot of insights out of that. We're doing something similar for autonomous systems. Um, we are working with the military on their classified data. So anything that's classified stays in classified. Uh, so we're using secure data processing for that. Um, that's a one-way trip, essentially. So we can take consumer side data, pass it through into the military, but obviously that doesn't come back out. But to your qu question, every time, as I said earlier in the presentation, every time we expose our engine to any set of data, even if we're not retaining the data, we're improving that engine. So if we're dealing with classified MQ-9 Reaper data that's from in theater, and we find some way of getting more efficiency out of the engine or a greater understanding about how different subsystems relate to each other, even if we don't pull that data back out, we pull the understanding back out, and that's tremendously valuable to us. So when we sell our product through our partner, MSAB, we're never seeing any of the data that those law enforcement agencies are processing. But all the feedback they give us in terms of, hey, when we ran through this data set, your results were not quite right, that makes our engine better. Sir? Correct. We're not, we're not take, we are not taking personally identifying information or anything else like that and handing it over to the DOD. Does that answer your question? It, it, the DOD finds it valuable, so I'm all for it. Any more questions? Sure. How do you get uh, some non-military people? Why would they share their data with you? I didn't understand. So, uh, for example, earlier this week I was doing an insurance claim investigation. So our understanding of how systems work and fail is helping that insurance company decide whether to pay out on a claim or not. And again, they're not necessarily, the insurance company is retaining that data. They're not, we're not keeping the data in any way, shape, or form, but our experience in working with the data that came off that crashed aircraft made our system more efficient, which allows our system to generate more value for the next customer. Do you think that's going to be outsourced in a third-party solution rather than safe, with not the obviously insurer, I'm assuming the insurer isn't collecting the data themselves, but whoever collects the data there, say Uber, say whoever else, yep. like, 
they want to outsource that whole thing to third party rather than keep it themselves. Our goal is to build our engine into other people's products so they can, partly so they ha can retain their own data. Our engine gets better, it improves, it improves their product, but they get to retain their own data. I have 10 seconds. Any other quick questions? Sir. Why did you choose to work? Pardon? Why did you choose to work with the military versus other um, Because selling to the military right now, because of the threat of drones in theater and domestically, is a huge problem with a lot of money behind it. And there's SBIRs and BAAs and other military contracts that allows us to get started without raising VC funds. So right now, I've put most of the money in, and Techstars put the rest of the money in. We're not talking to VCs yet, and I don't think we're going to need to. Thank you all very much.